This is a big question, Ben. This might be the question. Ben, uh, hey, why do we hurt each other? <laughs> That's the question, right? What is physical aggression and why do we hurt each other? Yes. Why do we hurt each other? Because we get what we want. Bingo, it works. Right? Kids, ladies and gentlemen, physical aggression works. There you it's go. It's ugly, it's harmful, we shouldn't do it, but it works. And we know this from a, a gentleman who's dedicated his entire life to this research named Gerald Patterson. It's called coercion. You act out, you get physical to get what you want. Whether it's physical uh, aggression you know, to another person or to property or the environment, you just get physical and you become like a caveman. I learned this several years ago working with a parent of an aggressive child. They went on and on saying, we never allow him to get what he wants when he's physically aggressive. Why does he continue to do it? I went into their home and did an observation, just kind of chilling on the couch, watching him in the natural environment. Fascinating, right? <laughs> because what happened was, they're right, when he threw that tantrum, when he got physically aggressive, <laughs> he they didn't give him what he wanted. But when I really sat back and watched, he had a little sister. Mm. It was after dinner. They did not ask that boy to do one thing to help out. Everything fell on the sister. Ah. And they, because they knew, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do it. Well, and you're going to, and it's going to be Armageddon. So, right? so that's exactly what, what, what Patterson says. A physical aggression and coercion is kids training the environment at, to bend their will. There are four reasons why kids act out and, uh, or even just human beings are physically Why aggressive. we do anything, right? Why we do anything. Yeah. And the four functions, we call them the functional four are, to get out of something they didn't want to do. Check. Escape right? avoidance. Escape avoidance. To get the attention from an adult or a peer. Check, right? Check. Maybe just to get something. Maybe they want that very shiny iPod, or if it was a little kid, it's a new toy, Legos or whatever, they wanted something tangible they could actually take, right? Absolutely. And the last one is because it feels good. Stimulation. Uh, when we're talking about physical aggression, this whole Gerald Patterson coercion theory in the functional four, we call that the nurture side. And you're all probably familiar with the nature nurture side, right? So uh, kids, adults, they learn to be aggressive because the environment responds in such a way that it works for them. So that's the nurture side. What do we know about the nature side of this debate? Okay, well, if aggression works, why is that person aggressive, but that person right. isn't, right? right? So the way that it makes sense to me is mm. this. We have a back brain and a front brain. The front brain is the more sophisticated part of the brain. Okay. That's the human brain, right? So that's like our decision making and our impulse control, our organization, our ability to be like, hey, I want that piece of candy, and if I punch you in the face right now and knock you out, I could get it. Mm -hmm. It's the one that says, whoa, 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 hold hey, on. Hey. There are consequences for gotcha. that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go buy one, right? Sweet. The back brain is that primal, you, you call it the okay. caveman brain. Okay. Caveman brain, I see it, I want it, I do it. That part of our brain has one function, and that is to keep us alive. Mm -hmm. So I am seeking shelter at any cost, I'm seeking resources at any cost, like food or whatever. I want, or power, power and dominance, it keeps me alive, right. right? The way I picture it, and this is the way it goes in my brain, hopefully it makes sense to mm -hmm. you, is like that video game, that racing video game yeah. where there's the turbo bar, right? right? And you go throughout and the turbo bar fills up, and when we hit that button that activates the turbo, we blast ahead everybody, we're doing awesome. That is the equivalent of running our frontal gotcha. brain, right? Like it's turbo, but the thing is, it depletes really quickly and then we're stuck and right. then everything else goes. So it's inside that child's brain and basically throughout the day, they have things where they have experiences where they have to hit the turbo button. I gotta focus in school, okay, I, gotta, right. you know, I gotta manage my impulse, I gotta be organized, whatever it is, and they have to hit that. The real key is keeping that thing full, don't letting it deplete all the way. And we can get into that, but we gotta give kids breaks to refill their gotcha. turbo, right? So this is what we do. We know that Patterson says it's coercive, all that's another, this is the big fancy word for you get your way if you just act a certain way. That's, that's what coercion is. We know that there's four functions and we know that there's a, there's a much more complex layer of all this of that there's a balancing act all day with kids and adults just in general to manage your turbo boost levels. Right, right? So rather than look at why is this kid acting this way? You know, wh you're, why are you, you're just taking over this 
classroom, you're so manipulative, whatever it is. Instead of asking that question, the question that needs to be on the forefront of our minds is, what can I do to keep, to recharge your tur turbo booster? Mm -hmm. The best thing we can do is way before, give that child frequent breaks, let them chill out, do whatever you can, even before we see the aggression, because we're recognized that even sitting in a classroom quietly, they're depleting their turbo tank a little bit. And, and this is for any adults that are struggling and who feel like physical aggression is your only resort. There are other ways to get your needs met. And a lot of this is, is simply done by communicating and building relationships with one another. So as silly as it sounds, and we learned this in preschool, use your words, reach out, and people will listen. Adults will listen if you actually really ask for a break and you need a timeout and you need to step away. And I would, I would add to that, don't wait till your turbo boost is depleted. Recognize those early signs of I'm getting ticked off or I'm gonna hurt somebody. Early, early signs, it might be clenching my fists. It might be, you know, taking a big deep breath. And that's the point where we engage turbo boost and we say, and the more we do those things, the more we build the size of turbo in our brain, essentially. Right. It's hard work, but it's worth it. Here are some tips when you see physical aggression happening at the school. And we're gonna break this down into kind of three categories. What do you do with the aggressor? What do you do with the victim? And how do we give the bystanders some, some tips? And for the aggressor, the person who's actually engaging in the aggressive, physically aggressive behavior, you do have to do kind of a quick analysis and try and figure out what are they getting out of that behavior. And once you have a pretty good guess about what they're trying to get out of that physical aggression, spend some authentic time with that student or that child to help them get what they wanted and teach them how to do it in a more appropriate manner. The second thing that we gotta do anytime there's physical aggression, there has to be discipline, but this can't be the old school zero tolerance, you're suspended uh, um, discipline. We like to call this restorative discipline or, or just restorative work with the student. Work on apology, that can be directly to the victim or if that's still too, too fresh, you, it can just be an apology to, to, to somebody about their actions. Then organize a service opportunity for the student. And when they engage in that service, whether it's reading to younger students or doing some, some cleanup around the school building, recognize the service with no strings attached. Just be like, wow, great job, looks great, well done, and even help them out with the service, and that, that can go a long way. Ben, what do we do for the victims? So for the victims, we gotta get away from that old school mentality that says, oh, you know what they need? You need to hit them in the mouth. They know that actually, we know that does not work. That can actually make things a lot worse. We don't fight fire with fire. Um, that is that actually is very reinforcing to that uh, aggressive uh, other the other aggressive student. So what we want to do is we want to give authentic time and spend authentic time with them, help them understand that they are, that they can build relationships with other people, help build them up, not necessarily through praise, but through just engaging them and helping them feel great about themselves through that uh, relationships, through the relationship. And finally, what we got to do is we got to look help them rather than focusing on teaching them coping strategies as far as like, here's what you do when someone confronts you. What we really gotta do is say, help them recognize, or we gotta help them find peers. We have to actively seek out peers. There are dozens of other kids out on the playground that are looking for other kids to play with and, be, and hang out with. So let's find, let's look, hook them up with them. That's the, that's the better strategy than saying, here's what you do when you're physically assaulted. Awesome. Right? What can we do for everybody that's standing around the group and seeing the physical aggression? What can we do for those it's bystanders? so hard. So hard with the bystanders. We've got it really, um, it's really scary to go up and, and, and confront the bully, you know, the one, the aggressor and say, knock it off, that, you know, that's my friend, leave him alone. Because that's, that's scary, you, you could get hurt yourself. So what we say is instead of confronting the aggressor, you've got to confront the victim, the kid who's ready to get beat up, and just grab him and say, hey, come on, let's get out of here. You don't necessarily need to make a big stand. I love talking to you about bullying. No, 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 I love talking to you about bullying. It's so fun. Bullying. It's yeah. Fun.